Good morning, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us for this webinar. So sorry for the technical difficulties. We appreciate you hanging on with us for a few minutes. Um, we're excited that you're here to discuss holiday predictions, retail trends, and consumer spending forecast. We know that this holiday season is probably going to be unlike any others that we've seen before. There's more stimulus money circulating throughout the economy. We're still in the midst of a global pandemic. And because of that, consumers have shifted the way they spend money and the way that they shop. Today, we're going to detail what are those changes that consumers have made to their shopping patterns and how can cities be prepared to capitalize on record sales forecasts and also empower their small businesses and locally owned businesses to be prepared for this influx of holiday shopping and for a record holiday season. Just a couple of housekeeping notes. This webinar is going to be recorded, so don't feel like you have to take notes. Um, all the, of the slides that we'll be sharing today will be available for you after this webinar, as well as a recording of the content. So we're glad you're here, and we appreciate you participating and also engaging with us. Throughout this webinar, you will see four or five polls pop up where we will be asking you some questions and hoping that you'll engage with us to let us know about what's happening in your community. Um, these are anonymous responses, but it'll be a great way for us to uh, stay together throughout this content and also for us to be sure that the content is relevant to your community. My name is Jen Gregory, and I'm the president of Downtown Strategies at our company, Retail Strategies. And I also have the distinct pleasure of leading our small business support division here at Retail Strategies. Throughout the pandemic, we realized that communities were more concerned about their local economies really than ever before. So this specific training and webinar and several other of our services are really geared towards making sure that those local local economies can thrive and that small businesses have the tools and resources that they need to be successful. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about our company. Many of you know us already, but for those that don't, we'll give a brief introduction. Then we'll go right into how has COVID shifted consumer behavior, followed by our top 10 predictions for the holiday season, and then we'll take questions and answers as well want to call your attention to two places on your control panel. You'll see a chat box and also a Q&A portal. If you have something you'd like to share with the entire group, feel free to put that in the chat. Or if you have a question anytime throughout this webinar, you can enter that in the Q&A portal. We'll answer those as we go along or at the end. So first, let's talk a little bit about retail strategies. We are really grown from a commercial real estate firm. We are headquartered in Birmingham, Alabama, and have offices really throughout the country. I'm coming to you today from our Mississippi office, but as you can see where these pins are on the map, we have offices in Washington, um, in Texas, Alabama, Mississippi, and Georgia. And we have the distinct privilege of really serving as an advisor for communities across this country. Um, we focus on all facets of community growth, recruitment, and retention. So really, it's our goal to be your community development specialist. So you can see at the bottom of this slide that some of our services include retail recruitment, Retail Academy, which is our training program, downtown strategies, small business support, and retail advisor. So again, your community development specialist. So let's go ahead and get started. We know that COVID-19 has instilled changes, gosh, across the entire globe, but something that really we might not have studied as much as we probably should is how has it affected the way that consumers purchase goods? So now that brings us to our first poll. Um, so if you don't mind, would love for you to participate in this. You should see on your screen um, a poll that asks you to kind of participate in this first question. What percentage of total retail sales do you think are conducted online? I'll give everybody a chance to answer. Remember, this is anonymous, but I will share out our averages and kind of what everyone thinks, and then we'll go through some stats and figures. 
So thanks to those of you that have participated. Um, I'll give everyone just another minute. It's, looks like lots of people are still entering their choices. Okay, so let's take a look at the results and what our audience uh, thinks today. So it looks like um, that about 60% of you believe that total retail sales conducted online represent about 30% of overall sales, and about 25% of you believe that it is 75%. Well, the good news is that it's actually much less than that. And the reason that that's good news is because it leaves more opportunity for local businesses, for those brick and mortar stores. So let's take a look at some of these post COVID shopping behaviors. We'll start right here, kind of in the center with that statistic that we just looked at. Total retail sales online comes to just 15% of overall sales. We are actually seeing that number come down just a little bit um, this year. Of course, it spiked in 2020, but analysts do believe, and retail experts certainly, and those within our firm, believe that that number is only going to continue to increase incrementally over time. It has grown significantly. A couple of years ago, when we looked at that statistic, it was around 8%. So, more and more people are doing their shopping online, but it's still much less than many believe, which leads us to the really staggering statistic that 75% of the rest of those sales are taking place in the brick and mortar. So it's so important that businesses that are locally owned and operated, um, that they have a great customer experience that they're providing um, because that brick and mortar is primarily where people are doing their shopping. And we're going to talk about what that's going to look like through the holiday season. But first, let's take a look at some of the other post-COVID shopping behaviors. First, we see that 75% of consumers admit to having tried a new shopping method since COVID began. Most intend to keep using it. So this could be anything from curbside pickup to buy online, pick up in store, or even social shopping. Um, you know, I think multi-generations started figuring out how to use this technology out of sheer necessity uh, during the most challenging times of the pandemic. And so people now are comfortable with it. They say they're going to uh, keep using this technology. So it's definitely something that we need to be aware of. Similarly, 68% of shoppers say that they are going to make more use of drive up curbside collection facilities at stores in the future. So this is that buy online, pick up in store, curbside pickup. 68% say that they're going to start using that. So we're going to talk about what cities can do to really support this trend and support their small businesses. Um, but this is a staggering trend that we need to be aware of. And we also see that 46% of shoppers given the choice would prefer to shop in person rather than online. So still a very important number uh, given the choice, even if all things were equal, almost half of consumers would rather go into a store. And so all the more reason why cities need to be aware of these patterns and make sure that those shopping areas in their communities, those downtowns, commercial corridors, city centers are really looking their best for the holiday season. Let's get right into the numbers. You know, we titled this webinar Holiday Predictions, and, and this is really the biggest prediction. And this is the overall holiday retail sales that have taken place and are predicted to take place in the United States. So you can see these numbers on the left represent billions of dollars. And on the bottom, you can see the historical holiday retail sales going back to 2018. So what constitutes a holiday retail sale? Well, this is basically all retail sales that are made in November and December. And so um, want to be sure that, you know, we're all kind of clear on what the parameters of that are, but also that we can see this huge jump. We see that from 2020 to 2021, there is predicted to be a staggering increase in holiday sales 
upwards of $800 billion. Now, there are a lot of firms and companies and nonprofits that put out holiday predictions. This is probably the most conservative that you will see. Um, ICSC put out a prediction that sales will be upwards of $900 million. This $800 million number is shared uh, between the National Retail Federation and also Deloitte. Um, so lots of variability there. Only time will tell. But I think what everyone can agree is that um, holiday retail sales are going to be at um, you know, an all-time high. So let's dig into that. Let's find out why and also uh, talk about what you as a city leader can do to prepare for this. So our top 10 predictions for the holiday season start with the first, and that is sales growth. Uh, we just discussed that we are expecting to see sales of about $800 billion this holiday season, which is a 7% growth from the holiday season last year. 2020, even in the midst of a global pandemic, still saw about a 5.8% growth, um, but we're expecting to see even more this year. So why? Well, uh, regardless of our politics and regardless about what we think about this, the facts are that there is more money, more federal dollars circulating in the American economy than ever before. When we think back over the last several years, there have been relief payments. Most recently, there have been stimulus payments, the child tax credit. Um, so all of these stimulus relief federal checks are really um, giving consumers the ability to spend more money than they've ever spent before. So let's take a quick pause. We have a couple of questions that I'd like to answer. Um, first, we have a couple of questions about the supply chain. Um, one question is, do the predictions take the interruption in the supply chain into account? Yes, in fact, it does. And we're going to talk about what that means when this uh, incredible demand is met with a challenge of not only supply chain issues, but also workforce challenges. Another question, how will the supply chain disruption impact sales? So the prediction here is that that demand is going to be great. People are going to be purchasing items. You haven't really seen stores slow down what they're selling online, right? Uh, what we're going to see, and we'll detail this later, is that really the disruption is going to be post-purchase when the consumer is waiting on those gifts and those purchased items to arrive. Um, so we will detail that later, but really good questions. And a lot of people definitely in tune with the supply chain also had a question about the sources for these predictions, which I think we've covered. Um, definitely National Retail Federation and Deloitte are our primary sources for these predictions. And then someone else asked, um, said that the audio cut out, how many people were polled to produce your percentages? Um, so we have multiple sources for some of those statistics from the beginning that range from um, the National Retail Federation, Deloitte, ICSC, and um, Statista. So good questions, and we'll be glad to talk about those sources with you um, later after the fact. Great engagement. Please keep the questions coming. We really appreciate it. So just recapping this prediction of sales growth, we know that this growth is being fueled by stimulus funds and a projected increase in in-store shopping. So we're going to talk more about that, but this is really the year of the brick and mortar. Um, so I want you to kind of keep that in mind. Early indicators are that customers have a big appetite for holiday decor, traveling, entertaining and hosting luxury items like jewelry and apparel. And when we think about what do these categories all have in common? Well, primarily these were categories that severely suffered in 2020 due to the pandemic. We weren't hosting holiday events. We weren't decorating our houses. We weren't traveling. You know, we weren't buying a lot of clothes. We were sitting at home in our loungewear um, on Zoom. And so this really is a huge shift. I don't know if any of you have been to your local Hobby Lobby or Michael's, even Target, the Halloween decor and even costumes are gone. So there's been a real shortage, but there's also been a, a real spike in demand. So um, we're going to take 
go a little bit deeper into um, some of this demand and really start identifying what cities can do um, to prepare for this. So going right into this, all of you are right on point. We've had so many of you make comments in the chat and the questions about the supply chain, uh, but we haven't heard a lot from you guys about the workforce. So we do have another poll for you. Um, and don't worry, we don't have too many of these, but do really appreciate your participation. But before, let's just talk about these two significant challenges, workforce woes and the supply chain. We know that the supply chain is severely affected right now by factory shutdowns, chip shortages. I don't know if any of you have tried to buy a car. Uh, there really are none to be had. Port congestion. I think we've all seen those pictures of ships just bobbing over in the Pacific Ocean waiting to unload their shipments into the port. This is for a variety of reasons. Uh, large in part that there aren't enough workers at the ports to unload the containers. And so there's just a huge bottleneck. So these pressures are really going to be felt by the consumers. Um, consumers can expect packages to take more time to get to their doorsteps as delivery carriers such as UPS and FedEx work through their own bottlenecks, their own workforce shortages. Even the United States Postal Service has announced that their prices are going up and to expect delays. So we're gonna talk about the timing of holiday shopping here in just a moment, but I think the main message here is that the demand is far outweighing the supply, not necessarily in terms of goods in some part, yes, but mainly in the workforce and the shipping procedures that can get those goods to the customer. So we're gonna see people spending money, but many of them are gonna be frustrated right before the holidays when they don't have their packages. So what can the city do to help this? Well, this is a global problem. It is certainly a problem felt across the United States, but we know that for once, really for the first time in many, many years, there are more available jobs than unemployment claims. So there are jobs to be had and there are people looking for jobs. So our strategy here is for your city or community to host a local job fair. This is really something of the past, um, but post COVID and now that people are able to get vaccinated and get back together in public, we think that linking up those local job opportunities with the local workforce is the right strategy. Let's start talking about these opportunities and see if we can help those local businesses. So a little stat break here, 55% of retailers say that matching labor schedules to in-store customer demand is one of their biggest workforce management challenges. So uh, we have another poll for you, and this is a really simple one. We'd like to just know from you, you know, are your community businesses struggling with attracting workers to fill employment vacancies? Um, this is something that we've heard really across the country, but we want to be helpful in pulling together resources for you. So we'd like to hear, is this something that you guys are struggling with? I'll give everyone just a moment to answer this. Okay, well, it looks like the results are pretty staggering. 95% of you are saying that your communities are struggling with workforce vacancy. So we're sorry to hear that, but we do really appreciate you sharing that with us. Um, and we know that this is something that is going to be felt on into 2022, um, but we're hopeful that as we start to see more opportunity to promote those work vacancies, that we'll see a remedy to that. So let's keep going in our holiday predictions. And the next um, really focuses on kind of Black Friday. One of the pre-submitted questions when all of you registered was, you know, what will Black Friday look like? Well, we know that deals are going to start and end much earlier when we think about a national level of Black Friday and of selling. Um, 
And we don't think that those deals are going to be quite as extravagant as before. You know, companies have less of a reason to put items on sale as the supply chain snafus tighten their inventory. They're, they're not, you know, we usually see so many deals on electronics and items like that. Well, those are items that have been heavily impacted by chip shortages and factory shutdowns in China and in other overseas countries. And so, you know, instead, what we're going to see, instead of big deals, we're going to see retailers, even local ones, start putting promotions on strategically placed goods that retailers have excess stock of. So if they're trying to get rid of something, if, um, you know, they had an early shipment of merchandise and they're looking to move that, we might see some sales on that. But we also know that one of the strategies for attracting workers, um, it is a tough one, but it is increasing the wage that is paid to those workers. We've seen that that works, but Similarly, those retailers are having to increase the price of their goods in order to cover the cost of those employees. So um, fewer sales and promotions are something that we can definitely look forward to. But what is certainly already happening, I think many of you can probably attest to this if you um, subscribe to national company emails or if you watch uh, advertisements on TV, and that is that holiday shopping has already started. You know, generally, November was um, kind of the kickoff for holiday shopping. It was after Halloween. And I don't know if you're like me, but sometimes it's hard to even think about the holidays until Halloween has passed. Certainly local retailers don't like decorating their windows for Christmas or for the holidays until after Halloween, but this year should be an exception. We know that retailers are starting those big sales now because they need to ensure that their customers will receive the goods that are purchased. People are planning further in advance, and we are seeing that the everyday consumer is talking about the supply chain like never before. You know, this used to be not something that everyone would gather around the coffee pot in the office and talk about, um, but certainly it is this year. Um, we're seeing that consumers are more aware of these challenges. Therefore, they're starting to, to, you know, get a head start on their holiday shopping now. You know, we also know that there's pent up demand. You know, people didn't shop last year uh, as much as in years past. They didn't do their holiday shopping blitz. The savings rate is high. The stock market is performing well, and the consumer is ready to get out and shop. So as a city leader, what can you do? You can install downtown holiday decor early. And I know this is challenging because inevitably your city Facebook page is going to get blown up with comments about it's not even Halloween yet, but we know that people are shopping. So we feel like it's in the best interest of cities to really get ahead of this and start preparing for that season, start treating their commercial corridors and their downtown areas as shopping destinations, um, really get in the spirit. And we'll talk more about that in just a moment. We also have another question that I think is a good one and very timely. And the question is, how are small retailers getting goods from wholesalers? I'm seeing that as a bigger issue for local stores. Last year, about 25% of goods came after the first of the year due to shipping delays. It's a great question. And as we have been talking to small businesses and retailers, what we have really found is that those, because of those snafus last year, that retailers have already received their holiday goods. They learned their lesson last year. They ordered much earlier. And most retailers that we have spoken with have already received their holiday inventory and they're starting to get it ready. They're actually debating, is it time to put it out or not? But similarly, we know that if there are cases where there are supply chain or delivery issues for the retailers, that this is really where they need to lean in to locally made vintage and antique goods. And we're going to talk more about that in just a second, but that's a great question. So another little stat break, 62% of consumers are very or somewhat concerned about not receiving their items in time for the holiday. So like we mentioned, 
this is top of mind for the everyday consumer. And so retailers must take advantage um, of this challenge and this concern and start talking about how they can meet the need of the consumer. And we'll mention that in just a second. But this is really where it all comes into account for me back to bricks. You know, this is the year for the local business. This is the year for downtown shopping or shopping in your city center, or your commercial corridor. Shoppers are expected to get off the couch and get back to the brick and mortar. Um, you know, there's more money than ever. We talked about that. So we're also expecting not only an overall increase of about 7%, in total sales, but in-store sales specifically are predicted to increase 6.6% year over year. So this is a big shift. Whereas in previous years, we saw kind of a shift towards e-commerce. You know, we saw more and more people, like we talked about at the beginning, becoming comfortable with alternative shopping measures. Um, this year, it's back to the brick and mortar. Individuals are wanting to get out and do that shopping. So what can you do as a city leader? This is really one of the most important takeaways. So if you hear one thing, I hope it will be this, that you know we talked about now is the time for decor and for your you know holiday promotions to begin. But going back to the basics, ensuring that your downtown, your commercial corridor, wherever your local citizens and visitors shop, making sure now that it's clean, festive, well lit, that the flower beds are cleaned out, um, and that you're ready for shoppers. You know, we talk a lot here at Retail Strategies about experiential retail. We talk a lot about the millennial and how it is the largest consumer group and they crave an experience. People do have to do a transaction and yes, they're looking to cross things off their list, but ultimately if they come to your downtown or your commercial corridor and they have a great experience, they feel safe, it's well lit, there's good signage, they know where to park. And maybe there's Christmas music playing or other holiday music in the vicinity. It's going to make them want to come back. And that's only going to help your local retailers. So this is something that city leaders can think about right now. Do an inventory. Go out to these areas at night. You know, as a former downtown practitioner and Main Street manager, um, this was something that we did every year. And we were always shocked to see what areas of the shopping centers and shopping corridors were super dark at night. Go ahead and take inventory of that and make changes now to get ready for shoppers. So we have another poll. This is our, our second to last one. And this is really asking about your city's priorities. So as I get this poll launched, um, the question here is, is downtown beautification and revitalization a focus of your cities? And you can see there's about five answers. Take a moment to read them. Um, we'd really like to know kind of where you are on your downtown journey so that we can make sure that the content that we're providing is applicable. I'll give everyone just a second. Okay. Let's take a look. It looks like many of you do focus on downtown revitalization. You know it's important. You may need a little bit more help putting everything together or, you know, you want to create that city center. And so this is all great to know and we appreciate you engaging with us so that we can be sure that we're providing relevant content. So this was uh, something we mentioned earlier as we answered one of the previous questions. And it's something that I think really is available to so many of you on this call and those that are also watching the recording. This is really perfect for our rural communities from coast to coast. As retailers, retailers report that supply chain struggles are one of their biggest concerns heading into this holiday season, small and locally owned businesses have the opportunity to ease that those holiday shopping frustrations 
by offering unique handmade items that don't depend on overseas shipping. This could be antiques, vintage items, handmade items. You know, maybe this isn't a focus of yours. Maybe you have a gift, a gift shop and you've never really thought about partnering with local artisans. This is the year to do it. And it's not too late. Have those conversations. See if you can have a pop up or a live um, a live art show where individuals, local artists are painting as people are shopping and shoppers can purchase these items or maybe they're making jewelry while people are shopping capitalize on this you know this is something that as a city leader messaging is so important helping out those businesses and sharing what makes your community unique so the city strategy here is to implement a city-sponsored shop local social media campaign and it doesn't have to be complicated it doesn't have to be super sophisticated what we mean here is on your website on your newsletter um, on your social media talk about the wonderful retailers and restaurants that you have in your community and encourage your citizens to shop with them this holiday season maybe you want to pull out some of the statistics in this webinar to share with your constituency and why it's more important than ever that individual shop local this year. This is a big one, and it's one that, um, you know, a lot of retailers get a little anxious about because it's new and it's growing, and that is buy online, pick up in store. We know that this is something that saw huge gains last year, but it is projected to grow even more this year. And so city leaders need to be aware of this. The year over year growth rate for buy online pickup in store is projected to be upward of 10% this year. So even considering those huge gains last year, we're expecting an increase of even more this year. More importantly, it's been found to improve the customer experience for 70% of surveyed customers by increasing convenience. Convenience is king these days. And so national retailers are generally the ones that are so well equipped to offer convenience. They can offer quick shipping, um, but local businesses are so well positioned to offer this buy online pickup in store curbside pickup even if it's just featuring some items in the store and asking customers to call in with a credit card number and the local store can gift wrap and bring it right out to the customer this is something that increases the customer experience by 70 percent and so we know um, that as experiential retail is growing that this is something that really needs to be a focus of communities. 90% um, of customers report that they are more likely to choose a retailer based on convenience. So what can the city do to help these businesses? Well, consider designating select parking places on Main Street, in your commercial corridors, for shared curbside pickup locations. You know, it's not practical for every single store um, to have its own curbside pickup parking space, but it is super practical and really a great community service for the city to put up a nice shop local sign um, at the parking place and allow retailers to encourage their shoppers to park there, give the store a call, and they'll be right out with the goods that have been purchased. So just a great way to partner with your retailers this holiday season. Next up, we have service. Customer service is superior this season. You know, we've talked a lot about how the demand for holiday goods, the expenditures are going to be way up, but we've also said that customers aren't going to get their items that they purchased online. They're not going to get them on time, which really adds up to a very frustrating season for customers. They are more likely to face headaches um, than ever before. And even in your local stores, perhaps the stores aren't well staffed enough because of these workforce woes. And so it really adds up to a frustrating experience. But locally owned businesses are so perfectly positioned to offer superior customer service, gift wrapping, curbside pickup, and other convenience measures that are just more difficult for a large corporation to implement. But time is money and 
we know that these resources are slim for these businesses. So what can you do as a city leader? Well, you can assist these small businesses through providing technical assistance to them, perhaps utilizing your American Rescue Plan Act funds um, to bring on a technical assistance coach or leader for your local businesses training them on customer service, on how to get their businesses online, and on restaurant recovery strategies. This is something that we've been pleased to partner with communities coast to coast on, and we've seen it really make a positive difference to those businesses. So this is our last poll, um, and really the question here as is, has your city or county allocated your American Rescue Plan Act funds. Um, and we have three choices. Yes, we have a plan for all of our funds. We're still working on it. Or what are you talking about? What is American Rescue Plan? Any choice is fine. Um, it'll just help us continue the conversation. So we'll give everybody just a second. Okay. Thank you so much for sharing. And it looks like our results are split about 50-50, that many of you have already allocated these funds, but some of you are still looking for options. We would highly encourage you to consider uh, small business support and technical assistance to your local businesses as um, an authorized use of those funds. Help them help themselves. It really is an economic development measure for your community. We're nearing the end here. We have just a couple more uh, predictions that we'd like to share. And this next one is about omni-channeling. You know, I think we talk about this a good bit here at Retail Strategies, but this is really that bricks to clicks approach. Um, you know, we've talked about that in 2020, the shift was towards e-commerce. This year, um, really seeing more people get back in store. But even in spite of that, analysts are forecasting that e-commerce sales will grow by 11 to 15 percent year over year compared to last year's holiday season. So still a significant growth. And of that growth, mobile commerce is predicted to account for 36 percent of all e-commerce sales this year. So that means people are going to be on their phones, they're busy, they're busier than ever, and they're getting back to all the activities that they weren't able to do last year. They're traveling, their kids are back in activities, their social calendars are filling up this year, and they know that they need to do their holiday shopping earlier. This leads to a lot of pressure for the consumers, so they're going to be on their phone. They're going to be doing as much as they can on their phone. So first of all, we certainly want to encourage local businesses to get online. They're missing out if they don't. But as a city, what can you do? Well, this is something that we have seen be a huge benefit, not only to consumers and visitors, but also to the local economy. And that's setting up a public Wi-Fi signal downtown or in your city center. And don't forget to promote that with good signage. You know, providing connectivity. If you want people to stay in your downtown area or your city center, or your commercial corridors, give them a reason to let them get connected. They'll continue on with all the things that they currently do on their phones, plus likely make a couple of purchases on that phone. Communication, and this is really so, so essential. And this is where we end here. And it is that, um, you know, Christmas is occurring on a Saturday this year. That doesn't happen very often. And so of the 10 busiest shopping days this holiday season, uh, two of those are within seven days of Christmas. Super Saturday, which is December 18th, and the Thursday before Christmas, which is December 23rd, the third busiest shopping day. So what does that mean? Well, it means that your local communities, your local businesses need to expect to see a lot of last minute shoppers. They're not going to be getting the goods that they need. They're not going to be getting those gifts that they purchased online um, because they're going to be sitting over on a ship on the Pacific coast. So they're going to be coming downtown. They're going to come to their local stores to see what they can get. So consistent and well-communicated operating hours and extended hour offerings are going to be essential this year to capture those sales of those frustrated that their online items didn't arrive in time. 
you know, I don't know about you guys, but so often when our downtown team is traveling all across the country, we see online that a business or a coffee shop opens at a certain time and we get there, we're ready to shop with them. And there's a sign on the door that says, oh, closed today or went to get my kids in carpool, be right back. These are only going to add to the consumer frustration. So really important that your local businesses have consistent and well-communicated operating hours, but also perhaps as a city or a chamber or an economic development group or even a Main Street Association, you can collaborate with your local businesses and promote after-hour shopping on some of these key days, give shoppers a reason and an opportunity to come downtown and shop with you and shop in your community. And don't forget, it's so essential um, that your downtown or community be ready with a beautiful environment, clean, well-lit, and safe. So that really concludes our webinar here today, um, but we definitely have some time for questions. So appreciate all of you joining us and we'll pause for a moment. Um, we'll be glad to take your questions in the Q&A portal or in the chat. Okay, well, don't forget that you will be receiving this recording via email um, for registering. And we thank you so much for joining us. I'm Jen Gregory for Retail Strategies. Thank you for joining us. We wish all of your communities a happy and healthy and successful holiday season. And we appreciate you taking the time to join us today. Have a great day.